now to our other lead story. Months of Republican allegations and investigations into President Joe Biden have led to this. The GOP-controlled House of Representatives has launched an impeachment inquiry into the president. It's just the fifth time in American history an incumbent has faced a formal inquiry. Laura Brown lopez begins our coverage. House Republicans have uncovered serious and credible allegations into President Biden's conduct. Within hours of returning from recess, Speaker Kevin McCarthy bypasses a floor vote and directs Republicans to turn their months-long investigations into President Biden and his son Hunter's business dealings into a formal impeachment inquiry. These are allegations of abuse of power, obstruction, and corruption. And they warrant further investigation by the House of Representatives. That's why today I am directing our House committee to open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. Republicans have lobbed unsubstantiated allegations against President Biden since taking over the House in January, but have so far turned up no evidence of wrongdoing. Now, three committees, Oversight led by Chairman James Comer, Judiciary led by Jim Jordan, and Ways and Means led by Jason Smith, will continue their dive into money members of Joe Biden's family made overseas, allegations of selling access, and whether the president arranged, quote, special treatment for his son in ongoing criminal investigations. Extreme MAGA Republicans have launched an illegitimate impeachment inquiry that is a kangaroo court, fishing expedition, and conspiracy theater rolled into one. Congressional Democrats and the White House dismissed the new investigation as politically motivated. White House spokesman Ian Sam said, House Republicans have been investigating the president for nine months and they've turned up no evidence of wrongdoing. His own Republican members have said so. This is extreme politics at its worst. McCarthy called the designation a, quote, logical next step that will give GOP committees stronger investigative powers to access bank records and other documents. But his announcement also comes as Congress faces an end of September deadline to prevent a government shutdown. The rushed and you know, somewhat rattled performance you just saw from the speaker isn't real. And far-right Republicans have threatened a shutdown and McCarthy's gavel if their list of demands, including an impeachment inquiry, go unmet. I rise today to serve notice. Mr. Speaker, you are out of compliance with the agreement that allowed you to assume this role. The path forward for the House of Representatives is to either bring you into immediate total compliance or remove you pursuant to a motion to vacate the chair. And our White House correspondent, Laura Barone Lopez, joins me now for more, along with Heather Cagle. She's a managing editor at Punchbowl News, which covers Congress. She joins us from Capitol Hill. Welcome to you both. Heather, I want to start with you. Just share your reporting with us, if you can. What is behind that announcement from Speaker McCarthy today? Well, um, no, Speaker McCarthy was facing significant pressure from the right to move forward on this impeachment inquiry. And I think from what we've been told privately today, he had hoped that moving ahead with this this week would give him a little breathing room in the government funding negotiations, that these hardline conservatives would be more likely to support a short-term deal at the end of the month, which McCarthy thinks is needed to give him a stronger negotiating ha hand with Senate Democrats in the White House. Now, all of that being said, conservatives have since come out and said an impeachment inquiry is not enough, and they have an entire list of demands that they want, everything from defunding the FBI to cutting billions of more dollars from federal agencies. As we're speaking right now, McCarthy is actually meeting with a group of Republican moderates. Several of these moderates are in districts that President Biden won in the last election, and he's privately trying to convince them of the necessity of this inquiry, which several of them had pushed back against over the August recess. Laura, you've been talking to your White House sources. What are they saying in reaction to this impeachment inquiry? The White House is again saying that there is no evidence that this is, quote, extreme politics. And to Heather's point about the list of demands that these far-right conservatives are issuing in exchange for funding the government, the White House is very eager to latch on to that and say that this is uh, extreme Republicans trying to potentially cause a government shutdown in exchange for an impeachment inquiry, in exchange for these a host of all these other demands. And so they had already started highlighting that, Omna, heading in 
to this September session, and they're going to be focused on it again. Also, the Biden campaign told me that they're going to be zeroing in on the Trump connection and essentially saying that this attempt uh, to pursue an impeachment inquiry just further demonstrates that House Republicans are uh, are trying to help former President Trump and are trying to follow his bidding. Heather, we heard uh, Representative Matt Gates there threatening basically to force a vote to remove uh, McCarthy. We know the concessions Speaker McCarthy made to secure the gavel with many of those far right members of his conference. Is his speakership in peril? You know, I would say if you ask Matt Gates, he would say yes. Uh, he said today that McCarthy wasn't living up to the contours of that deal. Now, we know several of the agreements that he made with conservatives back in January after those 15 votes, but the full deal was never released. And depending on who you ask, if you ask McCarthy's office or if you ask some of these conservative hardliners like Gates, they'll say that they agreed to different things. But because no one has seen actual paper, we don't know what this handshake agreement that they made was. Now, Congress Congressman Gates says McCarthy is not living up to this even after the speaker agreed and moved ahead with this impeachment inquiry. I think the question now is would McCarthy have the votes if this were launched to uh, survive a challenge to a speakership? Before this, we would have seen Democrats possibly help him out. Uh, now they're privately saying there's no way we're doing that uh, when you're trying to impeach the Democratic president. Laura, you shared with us what the White House sources are saying, but what about other Democrats? Are they at all concerned that this could hurt the political future of the Biden reelection campaign? Democrats I've talked to, Amna, across the House, Senate, campaign, said that they're not concerned at this point due to the lack of evidence. Uh, I spoke to one Republican pollster today who actually was conducting a focus group as they were texting me of Trump to Biden voters. And they said that only one voter in that group knew about the impeachment inquiry announcement, despite the fact that it had happened hours prior in the day that no one cared about Hunter Biden. They cared about the economy. And pollsters like that, have told me that swing voters generally see this as a personal matter, a personal family problem, and that they don't hold it against President Biden. Now, another important piece of final context, Amna, on the motivation for House Republicans is that Republican members were saying as early as September of 2022 that they were going to launch an impeachment inquiry even before they won the House. And I spoke to uh, former House Republican Charlie Dent, a moderate that was ostracized by his party and essentially pushed out, and he said that uh, the motivation for Republicans here is to muddy the waters and to try to draw a false equivalency, all as uh, people are delivering under oath testimony in the alleged criminal, uh, alleged criminal criminality against Trump in those trials, and that Republicans are trying essentially to hurt Biden politically. Another historic day here in Washington. I have a feeling we're going to be covering this quite a bit in the weeks and months ahead. Thanks for joining me here in the studio, our White House correspondent, Laura Barone Lopez, and from Capitol Hill, Heather Cagle of Punchbowl News. Thank you to you both. Thank you.